Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a DDR5 memory overclock that I've set up on the Gigabyte Z690ARS Pro along with the 12900K and some of this uh, crucial uh, DDR5 4800CL40 uh, memory. So yeah, Crucial sent two kits of this. Um, it comes stock at 4800CL40 1.1 volts. Uh, 16 gig DIMMs using Micron 16 gigabit Rev A memory chips. So uh, basically, if you want, uh, well, so you can technically get 8 gig DDR5 DIMMs right now. I highly recommend you don't because those use X16 memory chips. So if you want actual proper X8 memory chips, uh, you need to buy at least 16 gig DIMMs. And I'm not sure how good 32 gig DIMMs are in terms of overclocking. Um, I tried running this as a like a 4x16 setup, and that ran terribly. Uh, 2x16 works pretty well, but 4x16 four, four was, was horrible. So I don't know if that's like the motherboard or the memory chips yet. Like, we'll see. I need to, you know, do more testing on that. But uh, yeah, so um, just got like these basic crucial DIMMs. On the back, there's obviously no memory chips because these are single rank, so we don't need to have any memory chips on the back. Um, and yeah, and so I figured I'd see what, what would be possible with them as like a very basic overclock, right? I didn't really uh, optimize any of the sub timings whatsoever. Um, so this was just kind of a test of like, uh, like basically, because the thing is, this is a 4800 CL40 kit, right? And there is a DDR5 shortage going on right now. And so I figured, you know, it might be interesting just to see, like, should you hold out for a, like, DDR5 5200 memory kit or something like that? And in my opinion, uh, waiting for a DDR5 5200 or, like, 5000 or whatever, like, some, you know, higher spec DDR5 kit is completely pointless. Because if we go over to the QVL for, well, the Z690 ORS Master here, but it really doesn't make a difference. Because um, we're just looking at who makes the actual memory chips. Um, so if we go over to the Z690 ORS Master QVL and we scroll through this, we can see that, uh, you know, for the high speed kits like 6200, 6400, uh, we're looking at a, like Hynix and Samsung memory chips. Um, and this keeps going all the way down to around 5600. And at 5600, we see one micron kit from, uh, Guile, which, uh, I have no idea how they're getting those micron chips to do that, but uh, <laughs> congratulations to them on, on this. Those have to be some crazy good microns. Um, but then if you look at all the other micron memory out there, like it's all 5200 or lower, right? Um, so like this is 5200, 5200. So, and the vast majority of the like kits rated for 5200, uh, as far as I can tell, they're all micron. So they're all gonna be using these micron 16 gigabit revision A memory chips. And it really doesn't make any sense to, like, wait um, and, like, hold out for one of those 5200 kits uh, if you find one of these 4800CL40 kits because you're pro like the overclocking headroom is probably going to be exactly the same. Um, so, yeah, and there's, like, decent headroom in these, right? I have them all the way up at 5500, which, admittedly, compared to DDR3 is, I mean, DDR4 is actually kind of terrible. <laughs> If we compare this, like, you could get, um, like, 2133 DDR4 kits that'll go all the way up to, like, over 4,000. Easy. Um, so going from 4,800 to 5,500 is honestly kind of, like, from a pure headroom perspective is kind of disappointing. But if you look at what's available um, in terms of DDR5, going from 4,800 to, you know... Well, to 5200 should be trivial, basically, because all four of the sticks that I have here from Crucial, they, they all do 5200. Um, and these are, like, as far as I can tell, generic retail memory kits. So, um, yeah, like, you really don't have to work, like, like it, ba basically with DDR5 right now, it's kind of like if you find anything that's based on, like, any 16 gig dims are good dims, basically. Um, so anyway... Um, yeah, and then, you know, if you're going to be overclocking them, like, it's very easy to, to get them. Like, 5400 is really easy. 5500 becomes, you know, starts becoming a bit more of a struggle. That's why I have the 102 BCLK on this. Um, also, you need kind of a lot of voltage. If you give these too much voltage, these are actually temperature sensitive. So I tried running them all the way at, like, 1.43 volts. And at 1.43 volts, they would actually overheat eventually. So right now they're at 1.4. Because the funny thing about uh, temperature sensitivity is it's often actually tied to the operating voltage itself. So 
on one hand, as you increase operating voltage, uh, your power, like your power consumption goes up and your heat output goes up. And so the memory chips get hotter. But the funny thing is, as you increase operating voltage, the temperature sensitivity also has a tendency to increase. So at 1.4, like at 1.4 volts, or even, uh, well, 1.43 volts, the highest temperature that these dims will run, like, run properly at is lower than at 1.4 volts, which is, again, lower than at 1.3 volts. At 1.3 volts, I can take these dims all the way up to, like, 70 degrees or something stupid like that, and they don't care. But at 1.4 volts, if they go, I in my testing here, I don't think they ever went over 50. Um, and that's not with, like, a, actually, I had them all the way up to 63, apparently. Okay, so that's cool. Um... Oh, I kind of wonder if that might not be glitched out, because I don't know when it... Uh, maybe it was during the Linpack run. The mem test, when I was running mem test, they didn't get that hot. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the, the thing is, is, like, as you increase the operating voltage on the DIMMs, they'll actually get worse um, temperature, do uh, worse temperature tolerance. So at low voltages, they'll actually tolerate insane temperatures compared to what they'll to tolerate at higher voltages, just in terms of stability. So... That's something to sort of keep in mind when, when tuning these. Um, and anyway, so yeah, I got them all the way up to 5,500. Uh, mem test passed 500, 560%. We have 33 loops of Linpack uh, with a 10 gig data size. So that passed. So I'm happy with like the memory controller stability. Honestly, like this isn't too far from what I would be willing to even daily. I mean, I'd probably want to push the CPU a little bit more. I don't think that 5.1 gigahertz... Well, for the current the cooling system I have right now, that actually is probably pretty close to maxed out, as Linpack was hitting 102 degrees Celsius uh, on the hottest cores of the CPU. But yeah, with more cooling, you could prob I could probably push the CPU to 5.2, even Linpack stable. And that's with AVX and like li Linpack is hot as hell. But I don't have the e-cores turned on, which does actually help because the e-cores add heat output to the CPU. So it's like if your cooling system is a bit on the weak side, then all the more reason to get rid of the e-cores as far as I'm concerned. Um, like, I'm not going to miss them. They don't make that much of a difference to the overall performance once you are once you have the... P Actually, well, no, like, especially once you have the p-cores all the way up at 5.1, they just, like, the e-cores are just kind of, like, they're just kind of there. Um, if you're not doing, like, 3D rendering or video encoding constantly, I don't think you'll really notice a difference. Because this is still going to, like, this still has more multi-threaded performance than, like, a 10900K, right? Which is by no means a slow CPU. So... Anyway, uh, yeah, so this this is nice and stable, runs Linpack, runs at 620 gigaflops. What's kind of interesting with DDR5 is DDR5 has so much memory bandwidth that uh, Linpack barely scales. Like, going from 4800 CL40 to 5500 barely makes a difference to the Linpack uh, gigaflops numbers. Um, which is kind of weird, because on DDR4, like, depending on if you were at, like, stock versus an overclock, like, the difference could be absolutely massive. DDR5, yeah, not, not really, not really much of a thing. Um, anyway, yeah, so in terms of stability tests, like, I'm happy with this. Um, like, you know, maybe I, well, I'd probably run a little bit more Linpack. I'd also pretend, if the cooling system was better, I'd also probably throw Prime95 at it in small FFT configuration, but... Anyway, so let's restart and take a look at the actual settings that I have on these dims. Um, well, basically, if you just want to go up to like 5400, all you need to do with these Micron 16 gigabit memory chips, assuming you have a good motherboard, I don't know, maybe there's some motherboards where this wouldn't actually work, but if you have a good motherboard, it should just be a matter of punching in uh, like the 54x multiplier and 1.3 volts, and that should get you 5400 stable. Um, and the board's gonna... Yeah, so 5500 is kind of on the edge for these dims. 5600 will straight up not train. 5500 takes a few tries. Okay, well, no, 79, 35, 78. Okay, it should be good now. Yeah, okay, it's good. Um... Yeah, so on a gigabyte motherboard, if the co uh, if the if you if you have a mo gigabyte motherboard with a postcode and you're overclocking your memory and it's getting to the like it's getting stuck on the 54 actually, if it hits the 54 code and then just loops, you don't like either you need more voltage or your settings are just completely wrong. One of the two. <laughs> um, 
anyway, also if you're having trouble like with memory training, you might just need to increase the voltage because if the voltage is a little bit too low, uh, it won't like it'll take more time to train uh, the memory or it'll take more attempts to train. So yeah, if you don't have the voltage quite right. So anyway, um, on the gigabyte boards, uh, as long as you, like, if you don't want to desync any of the memory voltages, because obviously you can have, like, VDD and VDDQ controlled separately, uh, if you don't want to actually control them separately, you can just punch in the DRAM VDD VDDQ here as 1.4 volts, and it'll set it everywhere to 1.4 volts. So right now everything's at 1.4. Uh, internal VCCSA, I'm up at 1.35 volts. I'm not sure that that's necessary, though I would kind of suspect that it probably helps with the ring clock a bit. Um... But, uh, yeah, since it powers, like, it powers the memory controller to the PCIe and also the L3 caches, which would include the ring, so, um, yeah, um, that might not be, that pro like, that's probably not so much for the, like, I, I've not tested that enough. 1.35 volts is fine, though, so, like, that's kind of the main thing, is, like, if the voltage isn't high enough to be concerning, I don't actually care if it's unnecessarily high, so... This is kind of my approach to the voltage is 1.36 on the CPU with a uh, high LLC. So kind of like a decent amount of V-droop on that, but uh, like I wouldn't be able to cool it if there was less V-droop. Like it already hits 102 degrees in Linpack. So the last thing I need is even more voltage. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, and then like 102 BCLK, 50 on the CPU, 47 on the ring. Uh, then everything just kind of like disabled. <laughs> So this is completely static right now. Um, there's obviously like... I guess for daily you would potentially want to make something that actually goes to an idle... Uh, like has an actual po idle power state. This doesn't have an idle power state because C states are turned off, turbo's turned off, everything's turned off. Which incidentally, if you turn off turbo on anything other than a gigabyte motherboard, it won't work. Okay, so this is like weird things that work on gigabyte motherboards for reasons that only gigabyte R&D can explain. Uh, you can turn off turbo on gigabyte motherboards and still overclock the CPU. On most other motherboards, if you turn off turbo, you get stuck at base, like you, you get locked at the base clock. Um, anyway, let's take a look at the actual memory configuration. And for that, it's like, it's all auto. Yeah. Um, Cause what I found out very quickly with these micron dims, even at uh, lower frequencies, Touching any of the sub timings has a like has a tendency to very quickly destabilize them. Um, so like they'll boot and they'll run benchmarks, but you won't pass lin pack. Um, you won't pass mem test. Um, so that's kind of the main issue. Though I did bump up the TREFI to thirty two thousand. More might work, but uh, sixty five thousand does not work. Um, yeah. Uh, so. That's why that's a 32,000. I did try lowering the TXP. That destabilizes them. Um, really, anything that increases the performance of these DIMMs dim very quickly leads to them being even more unstable. Now, the, the nice thing about this right here is that technically, if you're just comparing about against XMP specs, this is actually fine. Right? Like, this isn't really gonna... Like, this... Like... Because the thing is, most XMP profiles aren't very tight on the sub timings. They just aren't. That's not really a thing. And so, you know, if you get one of these sort of like 4800 CL40 kits, um, you can basically just punch in some slight... I'm not even sure. At 5400, you wouldn't even need to loosen out the TRCD. Like, fun fact, like there was an earlier take of this video where I had like a stable 5400 at like 1.3 volts on the memory with, uh, you know, like timings that look like this. Um, and I scrapped that because I was like, oh no, that's too, too easy. There's, there's nothing really that interesting to talk about. So I added the extra BCLK to this just to see, you know, how much further I could push it. 5600 will straight up not train. Um, but yeah, like if you're, so if, if you're sort of wondering about these crucial, you know, memory sticks, they're decent. Um, right? Like, you're not, like, if you get these, you're not screwed. Like, you're not completely screwed. They do have some headroom. They're actually really, like, as long as you don't touch the sub timings, they're super easy to work with, right? Like, literally just punch in 50, like, it, especially if you're not even going up to, like, 5,500, you can literally just take the 54 ratio, punch in some, like, probably 1.3 volts, but, you know, maybe a little bit more depending on your, maybe a little bit less if you get lucky. 
Um, yeah, you punch in 1.3 volts and it should pass Memtest. So that's pretty neat. Um, and uh, yeah, in the future, I'll obviously be doing like, I'll, I'll try to actually tighten these <laughs> in the future because uh, yeah, I'm not thrilled about having everything set to auto. Um, but the thing is, auto works, and it is fast, like, it's faster than stock. It's faster than a lot of the XMPs you can, can't can buy, because, again, there's a DDR5 shortage. But, you know, before all of the, like, DDR4 5200 kits ran out, this is still faster than the XMP on those, because it's just a higher frequency. Um, so, yeah. And, I, like, I'm serious, everything is just on auto everywhere. Um... So there's certainly room for, like, further improvement here, but as a sort of, like, initial baseline overclock of, like, hey, can these go anywhere? The answer is yes. Not super far, um, but they, they can certainly go faster than, than the base spec. Um, by, a, by a decent amount, right? Like, 5,500 compared to 4,800, it's, like... It's still not the kind of thing I'm used to with, like, OEM sticks on DDR4. Well, it depends which OEM sticks. I can't really think of any OEM DDR4 that won't do at least 3,000 that you can't get in, like, a 2133 bin. Yeah, so actually... Well, I guess you could maybe find this this memory chip from Micron in, like, a 4,000 bin, maybe. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but that might actually be a thing you could get. And then you'd have more headroom, I guess, because, the like, the starting point would be far lower. But, um... Yeah, so thank you to Crucial for providing the, the memory kit. Um, and yeah, I'll be doing a lot more testing it with with it in the future because these are currently the only, like, this is currently the only, like, dual rank configuration I can do for DDR5 because for Hynix memory sticks, I only have two of them. Um, and uh, yeah, and also Hynix memory sticks are kind of rare right now. So actually, like, not even kind of rare, very rare. <laughs> Right, with like DDR5 being as rare as it is in general, the Hynix memory kits are even rarer. So, yeah, anyway, um, that's it for the video. Hopefully you find this somewhat useful if you have, you know, some DDR5 and, and you need like a starting point for your memory overclock. Just, if you've got anything micron-based, just punch in 5400 at like 1.3 volts. It'll probably work if your motherboard doesn't completely suck. Um, and, uh... Yeah, that's it for the video. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, hoodies, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it'd be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And uh, that's it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.